You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Grateful to be here with you. Thankful to all of you who have taken a few minutes to go ask your questions at askdroneu.com for maybe working up the courage. I know a lot of folks don't like to hear themselves or put themselves out there in that way. So thank you for doing so, even when it's hard. And I think you'll find out it's actually not that hard. It's not too big of a deal. And you might enjoy hearing yourself on the podcast. So get out there, askdroneu.com. Let us know what's on your mind. Definitely. And we've got a very interesting question today regarding a drone program who uh, you got to give them credit because they admitted their faults. They bought some equipment. People weren't trained on it. They bought some more equipment. They weren't trained on it. And now they're like, what do we do? So uh, you got to give them credit because a lot of departments have done this and they haven't kind of fessed up to it. And I think that we can all learn from uh, this particular caller. And I think it's a great opportunity to really showcase the importance that You know, you could have the best tool on the planet, but if you don't know how to use it effectively, it's worthless. So uh, very, very interesting question for today. Let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Cody, longtime listener, first time caller. My question revolves around our drone team and our next step. Uh, We started a drone team a couple years ago, kind of just jumping into the drone world and the previous team purchased an Inspire 2 without an external camera. Uh, then they jumped into an Autel Evo 2 that's an 8K. Now we're looking to get into a bigger, better drone, um, better capabilities for inspecting grain legs, grain bins, structural steel, uh, potentially moving into 3D mapping and potentially looking at thermal imaging and looking to utilize this next drone in a preventative maintenance piece for our facilities. We have looked at potentially upgrading to a Matrice 300, but I don't want it to be a situation where we jump into a very expensive drone when we could get what we wanted out of something maybe a step back like a phantom 4 pro um just looking to see what your suggestions would be and uh yeah look forward to your response thank you Thank you, Cody, again, for another very well thought out question. Lots of detail, which is very helpful. There's still, and and this is no fault of yours, there's still a lot that I'm curious about. Like, why are the other drones not enough at this point, et cetera? What are, what are they not liking about them? But what's the environment that they're flying in? What's yeah. the environment? Yeah. But all of that said, I think... Uh, there's still some thoughts to be had regarding what they're looking at. For sure. And I just want to say thanks again for listening uh, Mm -hmm. and calling in a question. We appreciate it. Uh, I kind of feel like the intro to his uh, question was something like what you hear on Mad Money with Jim Cramer. (laughs) Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, So, okay. So he talked about uh, he's got two drones right now, Inspire 2, no camera payload. Uh, he's got the Autel Evo 2 8K, so I'm guessing it's not the dual. And he talked about how he wants to do inspections on particular assets. I'm guessing they're outside. And he also mentioned that he wants to do mapping. I think something that's very important to understand is that there are solutions to these problems that cost less than, say, an M300. But it's important to note that while you may have less features, some of these things can be overcome with pilot skill, okay? So I would say the solution kind of comes down to where pilot skill is. And so here's the example, right? He, he talks about he wants to do inspections, potentially wants to do, uh, you know, thermal. We just wrote an article about how solar inspections and the cost of getting in them can be reduced by almost two thirds by flying a Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance rather than an M200 or an M300. Because here's the thing. Let's talk about maintenance costs really fast, right? 
a battery for an M2 EDA is less than $200. Let's just call it $200 with shipping, okay? Uh, uh, one pair of batteries for an M300 is going to be $1,400 or uh, the cost of a Phantom 4 Pro. So um, that said, it's something to think about. Now, let's put this in perspective, right? How close can you fly to these assets and do so safely? Because with a Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance, you're going to have to fly a little bit closer than what you would with something like an M300, okay? Let's take Thermal out of the picture. He's got an Inspire 2. He could buy an X7 camera. We know a lot of utility companies who are using those specific drones because they are cheaper than the Enterprise series of drones, and you have more lens options. And we just learned at Rob's wedding, Rob's son's wedding this weekend, how powerful a very large lens on an X7 can be. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> my point is, is that uh, you don't have to fly nearly as close with an X7 50 millimeter and you can take very, very large images and then zoom in them on post and get done what you need to get done. Which brings me to my next point. What are the systems in getting these inspections done? You know, are we trying to make decisions in the field or are we capturing media and making decisions back in the office, right? Mm -hmm. This all goes into the formula of what equipment to buy. Now that said, let's say that you've got a lot of pilots who don't have a lot of experience and they can't fly very close to stuff and maybe they haven't gone through flight mastery here at Drone U, which teaches spatial awareness. Um, and, you know, that was a shameless plug. Uh, but, <laughs> Smooth though, <laughs> yeah, smooth. Um, but that's <laughs> That said, an M300 does have these laser uh, range finders that offer an unprecedented uh, obstacle avoidance capability. Uh, you know, as John McBride said, there still are some holes uh, in that obstacle avoidance system, what you can see and what you can't see. But at the same time, you can fly much further away, zoom in astronomically into a particular given asset, take a great photo and also have further protection in flying close to stuff. Now that said, while it does reduce the chances of a crash, there are still instances where those aircraft will crash because of sensor failures or pilots' inability to stop an emergency. That said, he talked about inspections, he talked about mapping, he talked about thermal. Um, I would say, you know, if he's got the Inspire 2 and he wants to use it, he can, he can do the mapping. It'll be a little bit more expensive than a Phantom, but he can still do it, you know, with an X4 S, very cheap camera, same mm -hmm. camera as a Phantom. Uh, he can also do it with the X7. All those bugs have been fixed with the X7, so you don't mm. get multiple block issues anymore, which is nice. In addition, you can do very high-level, high-grade mapping when you throw, uh, you know, uh, a higher-level lens on the X7, something like a 35 mil or a 50 mil. You can get a crazy amount of detail. Hmm. So that said, uh, it, I mean, what about thermal? Is there a thermal payload for the Inspire 2? There is not a thermal payload for the Inspire 2. DJI had locked that down on the X-T2, which really, really sucks because it's the same mount. So uh, that said, maybe we need drone hacks to come up with something uh, to because that'd be a that'd be a you could charge a lot of money for that hack and it'd still be valuable. Yeah. Um, so that said, maybe the M300 is the one go-to solution for him. Um, maybe he can do it with the X7 on the Inspire 2 and then purchase a Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance, which has thermal. Uh, you know, it's $8,000 versus 15K for the 300, $10,000 for the camera payload, the H20, or, uh, you know, or what is it, the P1 and L1 that they have now. Um, uh, you know, so that's a significant cost, but also the cost to run those drones is off the charts, right? I mean, Rob, you see how many batteries I took to your wedding. I had an entire box of batteries, yeah, seven pairs of batteries, right? What is 1400 times seven, you know, for the average, you know, to be able to fly for even half a day on the 300, uh, you know, what is that going to cost? And what no, happens yeah. if you lose a battery, you know? Well, and not to mention for, I mean, since we're talking about my son's wedding, well, you wouldn't have flown the M300. It would have blown everybody away, right? Oh, yeah. I <laughs> so mean, oh, that's yeah. not even a thing. The Inspire 2 was already pretty loud for a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it worked. It worked. Uh, well, with a very um, specific plan, right, of yeah. not flying during the ceremony, we told um, the pastor uh, uh, that, hey, you know, once you say you may now kiss the bride before you let them walk down the aisle, wait 60 seconds, allow me to take off so I can get that shot. It, and oh, it was flawless. It, it really was beautiful. Yeah, it really was. Uh, it was cool. Yeah, and I just can't, I mean, I sit here and, and wonder 
I guess, obviously, everybody knows this. I don't know enough um, reasons to buy the M300 versus, say, even... I mean, you could get three of the the uh, Mavic Advance Enterprise, right? Mm -hmm. Basically. Yeah. And and have the batteries that are a couple hundred bucks, if that. Yep. So And they're self-heating, and they're very reliable, and they last about two years or 70 cycles. But so why, I mean, is it because maybe the M300 can handle some payloads that you, for more sophisticated inspections, for example, that that you just wouldn't be able to do at the same level of quality? Yeah, pretty much. Right. So it allows you to fly further away because you've got a higher quality camera with more zoom, a higher quality thermal camera with a different lens profile. So you, you don't have to fly as close and you can get really high quality materials and data. At the same time, if you have pilots who can fly a little bit closer and, you know, the environment of flight really matters because, again, we go back to like power line inspections, you can do pretty much a lot with a Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance. Now, can you take photos of serial numbers? No, you you really can't do that effectively. Hmm. Uh, and you have to fly too close where you're in the danger zone of essentially uh, having magnetic interference errors. So yeah. there, there's really a lot that goes into this. And, um, and you could crash into the wrong component and literally cut out electricity yeah, for would, uh, a section of town. I mean, so uh -huh. there's very real issues there that you have to consider. Can you, I would imagine also on the M300, you can run a much higher quality thermal camera. Technically, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I will say yes. with, D with DJI, uh, you know, crushing the isotherms in their most recent firmware, which is a direct violation of Supreme Court law. But hey, our president just did that too, which kind of degrades the entire point of the Supreme Court, if you ask me. But that said, uh, and it also empowers people like DJI who are now going to get away with taking features away from something that people paid for. And it goes- Tesla does it. And it, it, it's why I tell people, don't, f don't freaking update your crap, because unless it's not working, then don't update it. And the thing is, is that DJI, and we know this, has snuck things in there to force you to update, which is total bullshit. Excuse my language, but it is. And, you know, I, I honestly wish John had not updated our M2 EDA because we would have had a lot more <laughs> capability with it. Uh, but that said, you know, it really comes down to pilot performance, you know, and it also comes down to environment. And it's like an algorithm, right? If you can't fly too close, then the M2 EDA might not be it. If the pilot doesn't have the confidence, it experience and capability of flying in those environments, well, then an M300 is probably the way to go. The issue with those more complex birds is that now you are getting pilots who are relying on these sensors, which have faults, right? I mean, you just brought up Tesla and how they take away stuff. How come Teslas keep hitting emergency vehicles parked on the side of the road? Duh, rules of photogrammetry, right? It's very simple when they're using stereoscopic cameras and they have bright flashing lights. Hello, overexposed. Hello, can't measure distances. Hello, running into cars. Like it's not rocket science, you know? Yeah. I mean, Tesla, if you need someone to work, I'm here all day. But that said. <laughs> <laughs> we just want one of the new plaids. No, I don't. I'm uh, mm, No, uh, I'd rather have the Porsche take hand. Thank Thanks. So. Oh, come on. Play along with me. Okay. It, it does zero to 60 in one point in under two seconds. They also No uh, other car does that. They also literally create a living hell when you burn up in the seat because the batteries can't handle the uh, extreme amperature draw. But hey, who am I? He's yucking my yum. <laughs> some people like mushrooms, Rob, and some don't. Look, I would take a GT3 over a Tesla 100 out of 100 times. Okay. But the Plaid is still cool. I'm not, I'm not, uh, yeah, it's cool. No, yeah. no, no, you're yucking my yum. Yeah, you know what? If you got a plaid, I would definitely want to ride in it with yeah, you, okay? No. Uh -uh. <laughs> now you're starting to sound like my girlfriend. No! <laughs> so, I'm going to take that as a good thing. It is a good thing. Okay, I all, thought honestly, so. Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> no, she knows when to push back. It's kind of nice, actually. Uh, that's uh, funny. But that said, uh, long and the short of it is, is that relying on sensors can lead us to dangerous situations. For sure. And I know that there was a couple of accidents being investigated at the federal level. 
of M210 and 200 failures of where pilots did know to switch into adding mode, but it wasn't truly sensor denied flight and they still could not bring the aircraft down yeah. and had a catastrophic failure. So, you know, I've always been a proponent of you need to know the systems of these aircraft because the obstacle avoidance sensors will fail. It's just a matter of time. You get dust on the lenses. Um, there's a there's a lot of water vapor in the environment. It's a reflective day. Uh, you know, the UV level is 11. You know, there's so many things that if you're not aware of how the systems work, then you're going to be left on the side of the road. It's the same thing with your vehicle. If you don't know how to change a tire, you're going to be left on the side of the road. There's it, no AAA for M300s. There, no, maybe. Maybe, maybe we should. Oh. I was just hmm. going to say that. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> no, I don't want to do drone service. There's no, really. there's too many high heads out there for me. So anywho, but one thing you also said is that uh, those who are the most flexible get the least bent out of shape. It was something that you said in the beginning of the show. You said it in a different way. I totally agree. And it goes to show this very important point. Highly trained pilots can fly lots of different aircraft to still get the job done. It's You can't always rely on one aircraft. I would say his situation is totally salvageable. Doesn't need to go drop 30K on an M300. That might be the best option for a brand new set of pilots. But frankly, if it were me and my company, I would want them to know how to fly in close proximity, how to avoid emergencies, and how to be able to fly confidently, not worry about what if, and get the damn job done, no matter the environment or the impacts from the environment. There. I Voila. Said it. Yeah, it, that's, there's actually some irony in that, in that I would think the pilots flying the M300 should be the more experienced pilots. But I understand what you're saying. When yeah. you're putting that kind of money up in the air and that kind of technology in the air. Well, and I know the whole security issues have really hampered the enterprise sales of that drone, but I also know that as uh, the, there's become more clarity in the security issues as a whole, they're selling again because there's nothing else out there that's like it, that's as robust as that. Yeah. Um, but technology doesn't always overcome the pilot, just like technology doesn't always overcome the driver. Right. Just like in Tesla's case, as soon as you get comfortable and you let the autopilot do its thing, you start falling asleep, you're going to crash. It's happened like 17 times. So, yep. you know, it just goes to show that like um, and drivers, I feel like don't have this responsibility that the driver is always responsible. Right. It's you're always um, you are always going to uh, be responsible for your decisions and actions. But as pilots, that is in essentially our mandate as pilots. You are ultimately mm -hmm. responsible for every decision that you make. And I will say, as I've grown in the drone industry, I've had to train my mind to not allow laziness to get in the way. And oh, like, oh, that the chances of that happening are like one in 1,000. Well, here's the thing, Rob. After 1,000 flights, it's going to happen. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, like the 100 year flood. <laughs> exactly. It yeah. Happens. And it's happening more. So, you know, they said they'd never have tornadoes, uh, you know, in Albuquerque. And and I've got a photo of a funnel cloud literally behind us. So, you know, it happens. Um, Indeed. And, and that's the thing is it's chance and it's risk. And I would rather be very prepared. And it just goes back to why training is so crucial and why programs, they buy these aircraft on these hopes like, oh, it does it all. We're going to be okay. No, you're not going to be okay. Like something's going to happen and then it's going to be the desk jockey who gets fired or the pilot who gets fired and then all because they didn't know what they didn't know. And I don't want to see that happen. And that's why I'm such a staunch proponent on you need to know how to fly these aircraft through and through. You need to know the systems of how they work and you need to know the potential uh, fault points and how to avoid those. And then you can really be a successful pilot over time. So I'm on my high horse now. There we go. I think we stop it there. I do. I will say I really appreciate your question, sir. Like, thank you very much. If you guys mm -hmm. have a question, go to askdroneu.com. Our effort to create the most comprehensive training program to help people like you and help train up pilots and scale your company is why we built the props program. So we've had a lot of successful clients go through that. We really haven't launched it. We really haven't done a lot of sales on it or sales materials and marketing on it. Uh, it's because it's working with the clients that we already have. And uh, we are in the process of scaling our own company right now and finding the right people to bring on board here at Drone U. And that's all because of you and your support. So thank you very much for empowering us to empower other people. That's how we go above and beyond flight school. This is Ask Drone U.